Okay, away we go. If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello again. This is Heather Bayer. This is Vacation Rental Success. And with me today, my friend, colleague, um, sometimes mentor, Matt Landau. How are you today, Matt? Lovely to have you with me. I'm doing wonderful, Heather. It's always a pleasure talking to you. As as it is for me. And so doing my usual bit about the weather. The snow's coming down here again. How is it with you? Oh, same as always, 82 degrees and sunny. Oh, well, I had my experience of the sunshine in the Bahamas. Yes, too. you did. Yes, yes. And How I, was your trip? My trip was absolutely awesome. I did tell you what we did, didn't I? Yes, you did. I did, yes. We, we actually did it. We bought a quarter acre of waterfront property. So exciting. Oh, is it ever? Well, and you know, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a spur of the moment decision. It was a piece of land that was right next door to the villa we stayed in a year ago. And, okay. and I, we knew it was for sale. But it was the first time we visited the island. And I, and I don't like to do anything, you know, I don't like to be one of those people that I'm on vacation, therefore I've got to buy something. And, th- and there are a lot of those out there and it can be, and, and I know it can be a poor decision. So I, I knew it was for sale and I thought, well, if somebody comes along and buys it in the year, well, that's, that's, that's all well and good. But, um, and in fact, I did talk to a realtor and halfway through the year, he got in touch with me and he said, we have a buyer for this piece of land. And I said, It's not the right time. So when we came over to Exuma this time and we went to the realtor and he said, you know, I said, I want to see what whatever else you've got, all these whatever properties. And he took us out on a boat. It was a fabulous um, two hour boat trip. He said, I want you to see all these places from the water. And we were about an hour and a half and we came around this headland and I thought, I recognize this. This is the place we stayed at last year. I've been here before and there's that piece of land I wanted. And he he took the boat up fairly close. He said, it's still for sale. Wow. Fate. Destiny. I, oh, absolutely. And it was just like I got goosebumps. And, and that was it. All the other, you know, it was a very nice boat trip and he showed us other things. But, uh, but it was just a done deal from, from the time he, uh, you know, we, we drove past this piece of property. And it's... Uh, the, the only sad thing about the vacation was the place we stayed in was not to my standard. But uh, I'm not going to say a huge amount about it, but it, it, it was a little bit sad, you know, that um, we, we've been going to vacation rentals on, you know, we've been going on vacation for the past five or six years, staying in vacation rentals, and every single one of them has been absolutely top notch, and we were a little bit disappointed. But uh, what the heck, I came back with. Um, with a piece of property and we'll start building hopefully in a couple of months. That is very exciting. If you need anyone, Heather, to go and just hang out on that property in the meantime, let me know. I, I will, I will let you know, but uh, you know, you're in, you're in that wonderful (laughs) place you're already in. (laughs) Zuma has that like perfect white sand, right? It, it does. Yeah. And it's that absolute turquoise blue that, that just that ocean just can't be beat. Well, good job. Congratulations. Thank you. So uh, where did you go? Because didn't you go to the Mayan Riviera? Um, I'm going in about a oh. week and a half. Okay, that one's upcoming. Oh, that's, so another, that. that's another white sand and turquoise water. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, well, we'll look forward to hearing all about that. So what's yep. been happening with you, with, um, with, with your community, with business? What's going on? Lots of good things. Um, In my gang reintegration program, I always like to work that in somehow. We have officially graduated our newest group of 
former gang members. Uh, most of them are working in traditional jobs here in the neighborhood. And three of them are in the process of launching their own business. And that's always the most exciting part of the program for me, mentoring and nurturing them through that process. Um, but that's always exciting. I have been working very closely with two um, young students from MIT, which I think I mentioned to you a couple of weeks back. They are helping with some new research studies that we're doing in the vacation rental industry. One of them is all about guest booking behavior. Up until now, vacation rental owners and managers haven't really had good insight into how potential travel, uh, potential guests book our vacation rentals. So one is one of these studies is going to look at the process that they typically go through and what kind of tendencies we can pick up on. The other, which Heather, you might take a particular interest in, is about the scalability of property management companies and what kind of characteristics are identifying the most successful property management companies now and five, 10 years into the future. So that's always keeping me very busy as well. That is super interesting. I just, I just love the way you delve into all this research and get so passionate about it. Um, yeah, but it's, it's so unfortunate in our industry. None of that exists. We don't have the, the, the luxury of being able to analyze any kind of data. So I kind of took it upon my, myself to, to really start looking into what are, what are the trends and how can we as independent owners and managers take advantage of them? Well, I think, you're, you know, you're, you really are spearheading this, um, th- this, this part of the industry. So all power to you. Can't wait to see the results of, uh, of all of that. So what we thought we'd talk about today was something that's, that's dear to my heart at the moment. Um, reason being is because I'm selling both my cottages here in Ontario. Obviously, I need, I need some sort of money to fund my new build in the Bahamas. And because my cottages have been rented out via my, uh, my own rental management agency for the past 10 years... They've never had websites. Actually, you know, Matt, I've never actually done any of the things that we tell people to do because <laughs> I, you know, although I own my own properties, I've never gone that route of being really an independent property owner because I have this this little vehicle out there, which is a rental agency <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's managed my places. But because I'm selling them, I'm selling them as a business, as a package. So they've got to have websites that I can sell with them so that somebody who comes along can buy them completely turnkey. And then, of course, when I buy my Bahamas, when I build my Bahamas home, I'm going to need a website as well. So over the last couple of weeks, I've just got myself completely immersed in website building. Mm -hmm. So I thought that would be a great topic for us to talk about because I know in the uh, marketing makeover, you've got um, uh, you've got your two um, candidates, victims, whatever, um, having their makeovers done with with new websites. And I'm going a slightly different route. So so that seemed like a a useful thing to discuss. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. I've said from the very beginning, and you in your literature as well have always preached the power of building your own website as an asset to your vacation rental business. And in a lot of cases, for people who are just starting, and Heather, you might um, resonate here, I actually think in some cases it's easier starting from scratch than it is trying to break bad habits and transfer old web platforms and all that stuff, which is just you lose some of your mojo. So I think there is an advantage to starting from scratch for sure. And it sounds like you're having fun doing it at least, huh? Well, I, I certainly am because I've, I've dabbled around in WordPress for, for a, a long time with, with really no great success. And so what I've tended to do is go the outsourcing route. And uh, I've had websites built by guys in India and... You know, other other far flung places of the world, and you know, in general, have always been pretty unhappy with it. Just mm-hmm. you know, it it just hasn't worked. They they have no knowledge of this industry, and and I think that was that's been the major thing that you know I'm trying to get over my concept of what vacation rentals are to somebody who hasn't got a clue what they are. Right. 
Um, so, so this time it, it was just very, very timely that Alan Egan, um, who many people may know from his um, uh, Rent More Weeks site and photography and Google Plus, all these things that Alan's very um, skilled at. So Alan has produced a new course called um, the, the, his um, vacation, uh, WordPress for Vacation Rental or WordPress for Vacation Rentals. Could be WordPress for Vacation Rental Owners. And it's a five-module course that, uh, that I've been taking over the past few weeks. And I'm up to module four now. And I've just been blown away how easy it's been to create my own website. So I'm going to, I'm sort of halfway there at the moment. But I'm going to expose myself in a way that I can only expose myself, and that's by showing off my website. <laughs> uh, I, w- <laughs> I, I will put a link to my um, to my embryonic website on the show notes. And in fact, next week I'm interviewing Alan as well. By which time I should have my website completed, so it could be a nice sort of little flow into it. But it, it's been a really good experience for me because I'm not technically minded. And and although I've been in the sort of dashboard of WordPress before, it's only you know under instruction, somebody telling me to go and do something very specific, which is actually what this course does. But it Alan does it in such a way that he makes you feel a little bit more confident in in exploring a little bit beyond what he's teaching. Um, So I'm much more comfortable in in knowing how things like widgets work, what plugins are, and and how to and actually what HTML means. So that that really for me is um, is my choice for the moment of creating a website. But I'd love you to talk about the the two platforms that you're using on the marketing makeover. Sure. Um, WordPress is something that I use for my own uh, private websites. And I think it's now kind of established itself as the gold standard of website building software for those who want to do it yourself, like, like it sounds like you have undertaken. Um, For those who are not quite as DIY-minded, for those who don't particularly want to get stuck in and learn what a plug-in and a widget is, um, there are also services out there that are designed specifically for vacation rental owners and managers that will build you a very beautiful, optimized website um, for a very, very affordable amount of money. And literally, like overnight, you can have this new asset to your business um, that all of a sudden puts you in a new category of owner or manager compared to the rest of the people who have almost exclusively just a listing on VRBO. The cool thing about these two platforms that I have been recommending is that they are geared specifically towards vacation rentals. And like you mentioned the closest thing that you can find out there in, in WordPress themes would be hotel um, themes. And granted, vacation rentals are not hotels, and there's a lot of different nuances. So these two platforms, uh, the first of which is called Web Chalet, and the second of which is called My VR, um, are really designed to streamline the process of uploading your content, your photos and your text and your logo and stuff like that, And getting live on the internet, establishing your own little piece of real estate on the internet that will be yours forever um, as soon as as soon as possible. And uh, the one downside of a WordPress website is it it does take a little bit of time to learn the interface. Um, It does take a little bit of time to do maintenance and all that good stuff that comes with independent software in general, whereas these two. Um, services do most of that stuff for you. They also have a couple of features that make life in general as a vacation rental owner or manager easier. Um, One of those is that they're able to integrate different um, listing sites. So you can actually synchronize your responses and all that kind of stuff from one interface as opposed to five. Um, They've also kind of chosen templates 
and layouts that are perfect for vacation rentals, very image heavy um, themes that we all know convert a lot of uh, web traffic into potential guests. Um, and for me, the most important thing is the staff behind each of those two platforms. And there's a reason that I chose them. It was not um, totally at random. I've known each of the proprietors behind Web Chalet and my VR now for a number of years. And I've watched them and their small companies grow before my very eyes. And I believe they're doing so with the owner and the manager um, first. I believe that they really are committed on a long-term basis to giving owners and managers this tool that most of us have never even had before, our own entirely customizable piece of internet real estate, and do so very quickly and very inexpensively. Yeah, I've seen some amazing sites that have um, have come out of both MyVR and, and Web Chalet. Um, and in particular, I mean, Web Chalet, I've uh, see, seen a number of agency sites being built on that platform. Um, so, you know, it, it, they, they really do lend themselves to uh, the small agencies as well. Yeah, totally. And again, I don't think there's any right or wrong solution, website solution for, you know, that can be universally said of all owners and managers. Everyone has different needs and they have different resources. Um, and all of these options that we just mentioned are entirely feasible. Um, the main goal being that you do need your own website. If you don't have one, you are uh, forever tied to whatever limited platforms you're currently advertising on. Oh, yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, a few years ago, and I, I remember I've, I've talked to people, I'm sure you have, who said, you know, well, it was sufficient. It's just it was sufficient to be on VRBO. Uh, or home away or TripAdvisor or whatever that that was bringing them in everything they needed there was absolutely no necessity to um, to have their own site but that that has all changed yeah and when when I really look at the big picture um, these owners and managers they realize that they need to put forth a little bit more work now in order to keep those occupancy rates high um, but what I am a big fan of is that every ounce, every hour, every dollar spent, every bit of investment that you put into your vacation rental business in my book um, should be an investment towards this, this future asset. And one of the disadvantages of relying on listing sites is that the time that you spend uploading your photos and the time that you spend hiring a professional copywriter to put, um, to produce your, your text, the time you spend on your, all these little tweaks are actually um, valueless at the end of that year if you don't re-up and pay the same price, in a lot of cases more, um, for the next year's membership. So that's one of the things that I think Holly and Alana, the two members of our makeover, are enjoying, is that yes, it is a learning process, yes, it does take time, but every little victory that we have is in addition to that final product when perhaps they're ready to sell their vacation rental and they have this amazing self-sustaining marketing portfolio that can go along with it. And you made a great point there because, as I, as I said at the start of this, you know, it, renting out the property is, in general, what most people are looking to do. But having that end point in mind is always so useful. Um, mm -hmm. You know, at, at some point you may come to sell this thing, and. It, you know, I'll be talking about this at a later time, probably about, uh, you know, how you can sell a vacation rental property as a business, because a lot of people are saying you, you just can't do that because you're selling, um, you're selling the property, but trying to sell the goodwill that an individual owner has generated, that's the tough side of it. But I believe that, uh, that you can actually do that and you do that by creating the full package and not just, you know, you don't just sell on the property, you sell on all the, all the package that goes with it. Yeah, I mean, if you can offer a potential buyer this, this tool that will sustainably produce inquiries for their new investment, I mean, that adds an entirely new layer to the ROI. Oh, absolutely. I'm finding this already. You know, we've, um, we're, we're sort of actively marketing now, and... Uh, you know, people are asking those questions. You know, they 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 want to know how this marketing happens. Um, 
you know, people are coming into a, perhaps coming into a business with with not a clue of how how it works. Yeah, you, you sell them just everything that goes with it. And I could see, I could see if someone wanted to get devious, I could see them telling a, a potential buyer, "No, you just get a listing on a listing site, and and boom, you're booked year round," which is increasingly not terribly accurate, right? Mm-hmm. It's uh, yeah, not accurate at all. I, I mean, I've, I I hear that all the time from uh, owners that come through to our agency because they're not that they're they're no longer able to capture mm-hmm. the, um, the 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 bookings by themselves, mainly because they don't have their own website. Well, I commend you, Heather, and let me know if there's anything that I can help along that process. It sounds like Alan's course is doing you well. Yeah, I'm. I'm really pleased with it. But I, it's uh, as as you mentioned earlier. You know, it's a sort of horses for courses things. There's there's a there's diff- I think this is what we wanted to do here because there's different options out there, and you know, you could still go to an outsourcer if you wanted to throw it out totally to somebody else but there are these great other options out there if you want to do it yourself or if you want that template um, style of um, of uh, of site so I'll be putting links to um, to my VR to web chalet and uh, to Alan's course and uh, you can take a look and see which one meets your needs and of course if you've got any questions about any of those then just put them down in the comments under the show notes and uh, either Matt or I will come back and answer them so and I and I was gonna say Heather I think it's a perfect segue into the and a question that you had mentioned from one of your readers about website traffic um, a lot of times people think that the moment they make a website their vacation rental business is successful but actually that's really only the first tiny step. Wasn't there a question about web traffic? Yep, there was. Let me just play that. Um, this question that came in via SpeakPipe off the, uh, so that the quality is not brilliant on this, uh, on this recording, but you'll, okay. you'll get it. I'll just play it right now. Hello, my name is Josie and I am calling from Gulf Shores, Alabama. And I do want to start a blog And the blog will be to help people coming to vacation in the Gulf Shores and help them get into rental homes or vacation homes that fits their budget or fits their likes. So yeah, I do want to start a blog here in Gulf Shores about the vacation homes available here. So I just need help and guidance in uh, how to attract traffic to my blog. Thank you. Well, that's great, Josie. Thank you very much for that question um, about starting a blog and how to drive traffic to it. So I'm just going to hand that one straight over to you, Matt. Okay, so I actually didn't hear that. I think there was something with the audio that it just played on your computer maybe, but I'm assuming that Josie wants to make a website and she has questions about how to begin driving traffic to it. Is that right? Yeah, she wants to make a website about um, Gulf. um, She's in Gulf Shores in Alabama and she wants to start a blog about the area, which I think, you know, that's fabulous. You're starting a blog about... um, what's going on in the local area. So, so that her question was, you know, how, how does she drive traffic to that? Okay, that's an awesome question. And, and most often the biggest question mark um, behind most people's process in building this website. Um, and I'm going to give two main tips that I think Josie could implement um, very, very quickly. The first and foremost is that apart from your great photos and your text and the information about us and the information about the area. A great way to begin building content on your blog, and I've mentioned this um, before, Heather, is to identify the 20 most frequently asked questions your guests have about your area. So I'm going to use the example of Panama. Uh, People almost always ask, which airport should we fly into? What's the best way to see the Panama Canal? And what are the best day trips to the beach that you recommend? The best way to get started with this content on your blog, because you want your blog to be a hub of usefulness and helpfulness. 
What I like to suggest is that people identify those 20 most frequently asked questions. They take each question and address it in the context of a blog post and you don't get intimidated. That doesn't mean anything more than a couple sentences or a couple paragraphs with a couple photos elaborately answering that question. So in the case of um, which airport should you fly into, I might talk about the different airport options. I might talk about their proximity to different landmarks in Panama City. I might talk about basic price differences, et cetera. Using those frequently asked questions as a roadmap to your blog content is quite obviously a great way to produce relevant information, information that your potential guests are going to love to consume. And then if you add a twist, if you give the post a really eye-catching subject line, which we've talked about before, instead of just saying, here are the three airports you can fly into, maybe we say something more like, Whatever you do, don't fly into this airport in Panama and then go ahead and outline the four different airports or whatever. Um, that's a really great way if you don't know what to start blogging about to really just get a core foundation of good information. Assuming that you have done that and you're starting to get inspired and you're starting to read the news in that area and perhaps do some news summaries or perhaps interview some local experts, you start to ask yourself, if I build it, will they come? In other words, if I have all this great information, are people are going to just start flocking to my website? And the answer, for those of us who have been through the process, is obviously no. And it's kind of disappointing to think that I've spent all this time creating a beautiful website and putting up beautiful photos and sharing all my wonderful information. Why isn't anyone coming to my website? The next little actionable tip that I would love to suggest for Josie is to explore the idea of backlinks. And a backlink is very simply, simply a link, a web link on someone else's website out there in the internet that leads back to your website. Now, there's a number of different ways you can go about accumulating backlinks, but you, typically the way Google determines the strength, the authority and the relevance of your website is how many other authoritative and relevant websites are linking back to you. And it's actually quite mm, synonymous with the way that things happen in real life. You know, if, if, a, if someone of authority or of relevance is saying that Heather is the queen of podcasting, then chances are it's probably true. Whereas if someone less savory, less relevant, less authoritative is saying, yeah, Heather might be the, the, author, the, the queen of podcasting, that backlink is going to carry a lot less weight. So the idea of backlinks is more or less to gather as many good backlinks as you possibly can. Having a backlink does two very interesting things. First and foremost, it gives you actual web traffic. So let's assume um, that an authoritative website is linking back to you. Chances are some percentage of their visitors are going to click that link and head on over to your site. So boom, instantaneously you have new unique web traffic, which is great. The other thing that it does in, in, as it relates to Google is it gives you this online credibility. It builds your reputation and somewhere down the line, you start organically ranking for terms that are relevant to your vacation rental. So that's a little bit of a more advanced term and something that we're going to be going into on the makeover. But what I can say, the core of my own website building um, strategy was to acquire quality backlinks. And you'll find plenty of um, articles that say backlinks are now uh, less important than they used to be. But I would not be recommending this if it was not the way that I successfully built my own vacation rental website and a number of the websites of the members in the inner circle. So the goal being find ultra relevant websites and see if you can somehow acquire a link on that website. And one of the tools that I've been recommending people use is called Open Site Explorer. And it's a free tool, if I'm not mistaken, for five uses each day, five searches. And what it allows you to do is to search any domain on the internet. And what you're going to want to do is pick your biggest competitor, the website that has been around for the longest period of time. And you're going to type in their domain. And what this Open Site Explorer does is it shows you, it reveals, it pulls back the curtain on all of the backlinks they have from their very first moment of inception. 
And what this allows you to do as their secret, secretly admiring competitor is to go through that list and identify which ones you can potentially replicate. So of course, if, they're, if your competitor is featured in travel and leisure, chances are you're not gonna be able to just go ahead and replicate that link. However, and in the case of Holly, I'll give you a great example. She found that a competitor of hers was listed on a Yosemite lodgings section of a Yosemite hikes website, which is literally called yosemitehikes.com. Holly then went to the website after identifying that backlink section. She emailed the webmaster, and within about 24 hours, she, with her Yosemite vacation rental, was featured on that same list. And the link, the quality of the link that that provides to Holly's website is fantastic. So we can immediately then go into her Google Analytics and say, wow, look at YosemiteStay.com has sent us 20 visitors this week, and that cost us nothing. And each of those visitors has spent an average of two minutes on the site or something like that. So you can actually track what kind of backlinks are working and what kinds are not. And of course, for one that is working, you can even kick it up a notch and offer to double down, perhaps pay the webmaster for a more prominent um, exposure or, I don't know, get a link on the sidebar or something like that. The goal being to build quality backlinks and to use your competitors' existing online reputations almost as a, a reverse engineered roadmap to go about acquiring your own. So I know that's a big subject and I know I got into some complicated little niches there, but in general, I would recommend Josie go ahead, identify her main competitors, plug them into Open Site Explorer and see where her, their web tra traffic is coming from with the attempt to then replicate those very same backlinks for her own website. Yeah, fabulous tips, Matt. And I'll just give you, um, j just to add to that, just we, we do this with our agency site um, all the time. And a couple, I remember a couple of years ago when we started looking for backlinks, we looked at all our competitors and and found that you know our major competitor um, had a, had a couple of of was was getting links in from some boat rental sites, and it's something we hadn't really thought of. So we went to these boat rental sites, and on both of them they had sections that said accommodation, and we had no idea that we could just email the webmaster or email the the um, the people at the boat rental sites and saying, look, you know, we'd like to um, mention your site on ours can we have a link on yours? And we just did a reciprocal link and we had a ton of traffic coming mm -hmm. out of both those sites. And, and yes, we, we just found that by looking at what our competitors were getting the links from. Yeah, it's a really, it's a simple tactic. The actual implementation um, is going to require a little bit of creativity. I had a couple of people email me um, after that session's blog post and say like, I found the links. What do I do now? Well, basically, you figure out a way to get your own link on there, whether it's emailing the webmaster. Maybe there's a form. Maybe there's a section that says advertise, you know, $29 per year or something like that. You've got to figure out how to get your own website there. And of course, some of them are not going to be possible, but a host of the other ones are. Yeah. It, it, and it, you're absolutely right. It does require work and it, and it may require some, you know, a reciprocal offer. Don't just go and say, I want to put I, I want a link from your site to mine because they're going to be saying, well, what's in it for me? So, yeah, exactly. you know, it, it, it could be that, that you include a link in a blog post that you write. Um, it, it could be Absolutely. something very minor, but it uh, just, just always remember that, um, you know, if, if they're giving to you, then you should work out a way that you can give back to them as well. Absolutely. And, and that's just another great example of why owning your own website is so awesome. Because every time you do send out that email, every ounce of energy that you do put into acquiring that backlink, that's more or less yours forever. And that's going to compound the value of your vacation rental website. So I can't speak highly enough about that tip. And we're going to continue with other website building tactics. But the main two, creating good, useful content as a start and going out and, uh, and exploring the backlink options would be a great way for Josie to get started. Did you have another question that maybe you wanted to handle? Yes, I do. I have a, a question about um, starting a 
business or incorporating a company. So I'm going to play this. You you may not hear it, Matt. It, um, it it's the way this is set up, but um, I'll uh, I'll summarize it for you at the end. Perfect. Hi, Heather. Dean Curtis here with Serenity Vacation Rentals. I just have another question I thought you might want to use for your podcast. Uh, we currently have two cottages. We're looking to purchase our third cottage. My question is, when do you think is a good time to become incorporated? I know that you yourself have two cottages. Is, this, is there a certain number of vacation rental properties where you think it's a good idea to become a limited company? Um, for tax implications, for liability and legal implications, that sort of thing. Just wondered if you had any kind of opinion on that. Look forward to hearing the answer. Thanks. Bye-bye. So that was a question from Dean from Serenity Vacation Rentals, and that's um, that's here in uh, Ontario. Now, Dean has two properties. Uh, is thinking of acquiring another one, and he's wondering about whether he, so the time is right now for him to become an incorporated company. Um, so I'll, I'll take on board that one because uh, I did it myself. You know, we, we've, we, I've, I've had six properties over the past seven years, um, but we didn't become incorporated till a few, maybe about halfway, about five years ago. Um, there were a, a number of reasons for it. It was, um, it was a method of separating out businesses. We had a couple of businesses and our accountant uh, suggested that this might be a, uh, might be a, a good way to go. And in fact, it, it's proven to be the right way. The last two properties we bought, we actually bought, they, they, they were bought by the company. So they are owned by our Clearwater Cottages company. Um, so now we're, we're selling them. We are selling the, uh, the company itself. So that is, all, I think it's an advantage, but we are going through the process at the moment of whether we sell, there's two ways of selling a, a, a properties like this. One is to actually just sell the assets uh, plus goodwill, which is um, uh, maybe the way we're going to, to go. So we sell the assets, the, the properties at the fair market value, plus a percentage for the goodwill that's been created in the business. Um, or we sell shares. in the, We sell the, the company shares. Now, I am not an accountant. I'm not a lawyer. I am in no way qualified to really give you advice of this nature, Dean. But, you know, th this, is, um, this is the way that we're, we, we went and, and it seems to have worked for us. However, one of your questions was about liability. And in fact, it used to be that a corporation could protect you from liability in the case of claims. Um, however, it's pro it really is proving to be less and less the case. And uh, as directors and, uh, you know, officers of companies just get drawn into lawsuits all the time. So, so having sort of the wrapper of a corporation does not protect you individually. Um, so that, that's really not something that you would consider if you are going to go the incorporated route. Um, the key to liability is having the right insurance and having enough of it. Now, if, if, you, if you're incorporated, you may be able to go for a commercial insurance policy, which is a little less. Um, however, that may not have the same sort of cover and the same quality of cover that you'd have personally. Now, we've also got to remember that we're talking about an Ontario property here. It's going to be entirely different wherever you are, wherever you are in the world. So the... Um, the question about incorporation really is one that you take to your accountant or your financial advisor. Um, as you grow, as you say, you've got two, two properties now thinking of buying another one. You know, you're almost getting to the point where you're going to have people coming along to you and so, coming to you and saying, would you rent out my cottage as well? Which brings you into a whole new different field as, uh, as, as perhaps a small agency. And at that point, then, yes, I would say, you, you'd need to be incorporated. The other thing I wanted to mention is that, um, you know, if, if when we started uh, the incorporation route, we were thinking that we'd be able to, you know, the, the corporation 
would give us a security to, um, to, to get a loan. Well, in fact, banks are unlikely to loan on the basis of corporation. So, um, uh, you know, any loans, mortgages you take out will always still require personal guarantees from the shareholders. So, you know, that, that doesn't really give you the benefit anyway. So I'm not sure if I've really answered the question, Dean, but, you know, it's it should be down to, um, you know, a good accountant, a financial advisor will give you that advice. But as you grow, buy more properties, perhaps take on other properties to represent them. Maybe it is a good way. Any Any contribution there, Matt? Um, no, I, I agree with everything you said. I, I don't really give any legal advice, but I would say if you're going to start your vacation rental business, do it the right way. And this is just another, uh, in a lot of cases, symbolic step of formalizing that business. And I think it's nothing but good news. Well, I love, you know, j- just using the word business alongside the words vacation rental is always music to my ears. <laughs> yeah. Like if you had a hotel, would you get a, would you make a, cor- a corporation for it? Yes. Yeah, it's 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 when it gets into being, you know, really businesslike and be, and taking up even more of your time. Um, yep. So, uh, so I also great. live down here in Panama, which is like <laughs> a bizarre place legally. So I won't even <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go into that subject. Um, so that that's great. Thank you, Josie. Thank you, Dean, for your questions. And for anybody else, we want your questions. So. Please, you know, use that um, if you go on to cottageblogger.com and just go to, I'm not sure if it's the right side or the left side of the page, but there's a little thing that says speak pipe and all it is is a voicemail system. Um, you just um, you just click on that. You come directly through to us on voicemail and you can leave a message for Matt or I to answer on our next mashup. Okay, that actually time really has moved on. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share? Um, can I give a shout out to an owner who has been really impressing me of late? Of course you can. I'm going to give a shout out to Sarah Elder, who's a member of my inner circle. And Sarah is like the poster child for motivated vacation rental owners. She is 100% admittedly not an expert. She's not web savvy, but she is just such a go-getter with any kind of tool or resource that becomes available. Sarah is trying it. And something that popped out to me this week, which is just really, really blowing me away, is she's using a tool to track her email opens. Um, There's a couple of different tools. The one that she's using is called Uh, getnotify.com. There's a number of other ones just off the top of my head. Sidekick, readnotify.com is another. Yesware. And then one of my other members, Cal, is using one called Advidian. But what these tools allow you to do is they allow you, you to see when your recipients are opening emails. And in the case of some of them, what they're clicking on in those emails, how long they're spending reading those emails. And as you might imagine, apart from being borderline creepy, it gives you this incredible window into what your potential guests are thinking. So what Sarah has been doing is she's been tracking when she sends an inquiry response, she's been tracking them. And when someone opens an email three or four times, she will coincidentally manually reach out to them and ask if she can help with their booking process. And of course, she knows that they are really debating this and perhaps forwarding it to other family members and opening and closing and opening and closing, but it comes off as very serendipitous. And in fact, actually, Sarah's rental is called Serendipity Villa. It's in Orlando. Um, So perfect for her namesake. But I thought that was a really smart way to utilize free technology um, to get a perfect um, window into how these guests are considering booking. And If you catch them at the right time, it will come off as almost magical, like you read their mind and boom, you've got yourself, uh, you got yourself a booking. I did exactly that this morning. Um, Really? Well, we use Sidekick and, but but when you consider that we probably, you know, we're into about 150 emails a day. So it's continually popping up on the right hand side of my screen when somebody opens an email we've sent. Um, But what Sidekick does is if, you know, if you get multiple opens over a period of time, like, you know, with this one I had this morning, it it had been opened 
four times in the period of an hour. Um, so, <laughs> and so I thought, well, you know, this, this person is, you know, I, we responded to their inquiry. Um, they were just asking about dates, av- dates uh, availability and, and rates. And I had a question about waterfront and we responded to that. So I just picked up the phone um, and, and this lady said, oh, I can't believe you just phoned me because <laughs> I was just looking at your email. Four times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I was just thinking about your inquiry and that we'd, um, uh, you know, we'd answered it. And I just wanted to make sure that we'd answered every question you had. And she oh. was just blown away. And four minutes later, we'd secured the booking. Love that. I mean, you could, again, you, there, would be, there will be people who argue that this kind of tool is creepy. Um, but I think if you are using it to improve your own business and perhaps more importantly, simultaneously improving the experience for the potential guest, then I think it's a no-brainer. If one or the other seem to be working um, but not simultaneously, I think you start to question whether the technology is worth it. But if you are actively improving the experience for your potential guest, I think 1,000% you have to be doing it. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And and I, yeah, I mean, maybe it, there's, there's times when I th- I think it is creepy. <laughs> do they do they know I'm spying? But you know, it, it happens to all of us every time we send an email. Somebody's seeing, you know, or we open an email. Somebody sees that you've opened it. It's like if I go to Expedia and and look up a, you know, I, I'm I'm going to the podcast movement conference in in Dallas in in August, and and I was looking at a hotel in Dallas uh, on Expedia. Um, I was just idly looking at it on the web and the next thing I know, no, I've opened up my Facebook page and there's an advert for that hotel. <laughs> Following you. That is creepy. Um, but you know, that's, that's what it's all about now on the internet. But you're absolutely right. If we can, if we can deliver an experience that makes, the, makes our, our potential guests and, and you know, it makes them feel happier, then let's go for it. Absolutely. Hey Matt, I think um, I think we're done for today. Um, I was going to do a shout out to an owner, but I'm actually going to do it next week when I talk to Alan because it is um, it's an owner of a website that's uh, that's created her website via Alan's course. So I will I will do sh- shout out to Naomi Saunders now, um, but we'll be talking about you next week, Naomi. Um, Matt, thank you so much. I love love these uh these chats we have i don't think we'll ever exhaust topics unless our in, unless our listeners get bored we can just continue doing them without recording you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah i was just gonna say well you know i you know they, they can they can be bored <laughs> yeah yeah it's at their expense <laughs> yeah uh great to talk to you again i know you've probably got a, a busy rest of the day and um i'll look forward to, to uh, catching up again with you next month very good heather thanks for calling you're welcome matt bye ciao Well, many thanks, Matt, once again for your input. It's always an absolute joy to spend time with you. Um, I always come away from these these discussions so fired up and motivated to go and get on and and do something really positive, something that's really going to to move my sights forward Um, because Matt's such a – just – has such a wealth of information on resources. Some of these things that uh, that I, I don't know where he gets them from. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'm going to be heading off to look at uh, the backlinks that come into our websites and check out some of these authority sites. See if we can get you know have have a, a goal. I think now of getting five backlinks a week, maybe. Um, see how that goes. So that's it for another episode. And as I said a bit earlier on, you know, it was it was absolutely great getting those questions, the question from Dean, the one from Josie. We'd love to have more questions. We'd love to be able to, um, you know, do the research, come up with some answers and ideas. Just remember, though, that, you know, we 
the the advice we give is really comes from just our own experiences. We're not lawyers, we're not accountants, we're not financial advisors. So the th- that that sort of advice, um, you know, really does need to come from those uh, th- those professionals. I mean, we're more than happy to share our own experiences, but uh, but that's just what it is. It doesn't actually mean that that <laughs> what we're doing is exactly right. But certainly if you've got, uh, you know, marketing questions or, or anything about the operation of a vacation rental, we'd, uh, we'd, we'd absolutely love to hear them. And of course, if you've got any comments on, on anything we've talked about, if you've got resources that you'd like to share, please head on over to the show notes uh, at uh, cottageblogger.com. And uh, and let us know. We do respond to every uh, comment that's made. So love to hear from you. So as I as I mentioned earlier, uh, my uh, interview next week is with Alan Egan, and I have posted my uh, my embryonic website, uh, ospreycottage.com, If you want to go and take a look. That is going to be changing over the course of the next week because my goal is to have my website completed uh, by the time my uh, next uh, episode, the interview with Alan, goes uh, gets published next Wednesday. So you could actually, you know, if if you're so inclined, if you've got far more time than I have, you might want to go over and uh, and check uh, that out every couple of days and see how it's progressing. Um, so, but next week I'm actually going to be, uh, looking at some of the other websites that, uh, students on Alan's course have been doing. So, uh, we're going to, uh, check them out, see how everybody's getting on. So thank you once again for taking the time to tune into Vacation Rental Success. Uh, this is all for you. So it's an absolute delight that you've come along to listen once again, and I can't wait to be back with you. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business.